Come here, hamburger. What you looking at? I love dorkside toys. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh review. Today, let's take a look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends movie Deadpool and Negasonic Teenage Warhead 2-pack. I've been waiting for this for a while. I've been a fan of Deadpool since the 90s, since his debut. All through the minis and the main series and the changeovers and the Agent X and oh I love Agent X. Mm. And then back to Deadpool and then the ups and the downs and the overexposure and Marvel sticking them anywhere they could in the comics and then finally the movie came along. And after his appearance in the Wolverine movie we all thought oh that's not happening again and Ryan Reynolds is perfect and they probably won't do it because they'll look at that and go oh that's that's terrible. But against all odds, they pulled it off and they put all the heart and soul they could into the Deadpool movie and then Deadpool 2 and I just love them. Have I said that? Yeah. And to see Hasbro finally coming back and doing a movie Deadpool figure and a Negasonic Teenage Warhead to go along with them. I haven't even opened the damn thing and it's already bah! Looking at the package, it's what we're used to with the two packs. Big window shows both figures, shows all the accessories it comes with. Most of these are Deadpools, but they kind of stray over here. <laughs> and, like, and like the other movie figures we've seen from Deadpool, it's the red packaging, Marvel Legends, and then Deadpools kind of come along and... No, this is our names. On the side, kind of an artistic take on Negasonic Teenage Warhead. On the back, that same picture with a Wade to go with it. Even in the picture, they showed his swords a little small because I'm seeing this in the package and I'm thinking, oh, those katanas are tiny. Katinies. I told myself I'd never do that again and I did. On the other side, there's the taller picture and and then on top, Marvel Legends, but you have a Deadpool logo over it. I actually thought that was raised, like it was an actual sticker, and I was trying to peel it. Um, dumb. On the bottom, a bunch of legalese, warnings, don't put them in your mouth. But let's get this open, see what's going on here. Always cut away from yourself. And like the other movie figures, well, first you have the plastic tray holding the figures, holding the accessories. But then there's this just very plain white background with an X on it. That's not really a bad thing, especially considering the, you know, the Deadpool-isms on the outer box. I don't know. I feel like it should be more spicy. Looking at Teenage Mutant... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. Oh my god. Looking at Negasonic Teenage Warhead first, I like the size of this figure. I love the look of it, but there are some uh, inaccuracies. And I think it just goes hand in hand with costing out when it comes to tooling and plastic. First up, from the waist up, the costume looks fantastic. There's a slight texture to the yellow up here. It's exaggerated, but when you get to this scale, you kind of have to up things a bit or it just gets lost. You can't see it. But there is a sculpted collar. It is raised. And then the X on the chest, it's sculpted and raised too. There's even sculpted edge for the yellow and then right there you can see kind of a chainmail or an armor of some kind or maybe it's just a shirt underneath again with that detail exaggerated because then you get to the silver shoulder pad which may look odd against the rest of the costume but that's how it was in the movie so I can't complain some slight wrinkles at the elbow and then a sculpted forearm pad of some kind well I say pad that goes all the way around the arm the fingerless gloves aren't just hands painted <laughs> you know half black half flesh there's actually some nice detail here the raised knuckle with some silver paint running across it and then the yellow on the back of it. The belt is also accurate to the movie. It has those pointed studs on the front. It goes all the way around, kind of plain in the back. For the new upper torso, the new arms, the new hands, the belt piece, you get down here and this is just painted onto a plain lower body. Whereas on the actual costume, Again, like here and here and here, it was raised with some lines going through it. And then when you get down to the boots, those were actual boots on top of the costume. This looks like comic book stuff, you know, unstable molecules, you put the costume on and it... But then up at the head, it captures the likeness fairly well. You get that photo reel up close, you can see the pixels and a roughness to it. But at standard distance, get it on the shelf or looking at it with the human eye, especially old human eyes, it looks great. She is looking slightly to her left, which bugs me just a bit, but 
You can also have her pose down to where she's just kind of, well, I don't know. Are both eyes pointing in the same direction? Maybe right there. But the dark lipstick looks great. There's the short earring on this side, long earring on this side. And then the hair may not be as high as it was in the movie, but it, it's a good representation of it. I just wish there was a little bit more paint wash to it. You know, bring out some detail, punch it up a bit. But oh, on Deadpool, again, there may be a couple of inaccuracies here, but they knocked this one out of the park. I feel like they went all out here because uh, they may be able to use this in the future for two packs or alternate versions or something. Again, getting up close, you can see all the detail they poured into this figure. I mean, besides the basketball texture that's been exaggerated a bit, again, because 112th scale, there's some nicks, some dings, some scratches, some battle damage. But then it flips to a smoothness on the black parts, which is accurate to the movie. Some slight wrinkles here and there, like it's an actual costume. The proper bands, the buckles, the belts. Even down here at the legs, this extra band going around the right leg with some pouches on it. Yeah, it's, is it sculpted on or is that glued down? Either way, knee pads, shin guards, you have some extra detail work down here on the boots. The hands seem a little bit small, but they seem realistic too. You, you think of the movie and you think, oh, well, you know, it's just a dude stuffed into a costume. Don't get me wrong, Ryan Reynolds is one buff bastard, but the costume doesn't go out of its way to accentuate that musculature. And they capture that in the action figure. The sword sheaths are also attached to the back. It's a separate piece, but it's glued down. You can't just pull it out. But under there, you see the same costume details that went with the red and down and the brown for the belt. And of course, he's a 90s guy. He's got plenty of pouches to go around. And then all that same detail on the back, the knife sheath on the left leg with the band going around it. And then the head... Oh man, it's perfect. All the personality that they put into the mask in the movie, they couldn't do here, right? I mean, there's no moving eyes or CGI, but there's a personality to it. In a perfect world, we would have got several different heads where you could see maybe a smile or open mouth and then maybe wide-eyed or, you know, just different looks. But as is, I am good with this. They even got the little bing on the back. But the big thing here is paint, or, well, kind of the lack of paint. They punched in the silver for the buckles and this right here. The things that are right up in your face. The belt buckle has that more metallic red on it with the silvers and the buckles, and they even have the clasps on the front. But once you work your way around to the side and back, the silver kind of disappears. They didn't put it on the other pouches. And that also could be said, I think there's supposed to be some silver right here. And then you get down to the boots in several places, like out here on the buckles, and I think on the inside somewhere. It's also missing some black paint down here. This red band going around the top of the ankle should be red, but then you should be able to see black right here and here of the boot still showing through. And that's on top of the whole costume seeming a little bit clean. Most pictures you see of Deadpool, he's grungy. There's some dirtiness to it because Deadpool don't care. He just puts the costume on, goes out, does his work, comes back and, you know, throws it on the floor until next time he's got to go out. I'm sure this red is accurate to the movie before dirtiness, but I feel like I need another one of these and do some painting or something. Also, the differences between the costume in one and two are very, very subtle. In fact, that's what I like about the movies, that they didn't try to change things up, give them a different costume, sell some more merchandise and toys. The big obvious difference, though, is right here on this strap going up and over the shoulder. In the first movie, it was fairly plain. It just had the seam line going around the side. In the second movie, it's split up. One of the other big differences, too, is in the second movie, it's silver on the back of the hand, but we'll get to that when we get to accessories. And the more I look, the more I think this neck collar is not accurate. Or where it's split horizontally, it should be red on bottom, black on top something like that but hell even that's a separate piece to keep it out of the way of well the little bit of lower neck movement you get now some will take that as a lot of griping and go down to the comment section and be all like, well if you don't like it why'd you buy it because it's a great action figure but because i've seen this movie so much and i love deadpool so much it's just, you know, oh, I see this, and I have to point it out, and I may fix it later. And you, you know, it's just nitpicks. Going over articulation on Negasonic Teenage Warhead, there is a hinge at the top of the neck going to a ball. You can look up. Can bury the chin. Oh, she's got some tilt. Swivel. Hinge at the shoulder goes up. Swivels around. Hinge and swivel at the elbow comes up to, well, you can push past 90, but then it just works its way back down to 90. Swivels. Hinge at the wrist and also rotates. Ball joint mid-torso gets you a little move. Movement. There's more back than forward. Oh, I'm a liar. It popped forward as I went there. Seems like it's a dumbbell, maybe. But there is tilt to that and swivel. Ball at the hip comes out, goes not quite 90. Back, out. Oh, that's kind of soft right there. It splits whenever I pull on it, but a little past 45. Swivel at the thigh, but you can also rotate on that hip if you want to line up the yellow parts right there. Double knee. Oh, something 
I mean, not quite, but if you force it, bing! Swivel at the boot, hinge at the ankle goes all the way back, <laughs> most of the way forward, then forward-facing pin for rocker. For Deadpool, I believe there is a dumbbell joint at the top. And I haven't really been liking the way Marvel Legends is implementing these. There's just not as much range as the hinge. But then that's compensated by a ball at the bottom of the neck, but it just doesn't have a lot of movement to it. You can look up and look slightly down, but doesn't bury the chin. Gives you lots of tilt though because of that ball joint up there. Butterfly joint at the shoulder comes forward a bit, back a lot, forward, back. Hinge at the shoulder goes up past 90. That rotates all the way around. Swivel at the bicep. Double elbow. I did have a chunk of plastic on the front right there, but I took a blade, cut that off, shaved it down, and with that, you can come all the way up with the double elbow. Hinge at the wrist side to side and rotates. Hinge at the mid torso and I forgot to point out that the belt is loose. It rides up and down, but that does go forward. Arc back and those start hitting the butt, but they're softer material so they do kind of bend. Swivel at the waist hidden under the belt right there. Ball coming out to the hip goes forward to 90. Back out. Oh, gun is knocking the belt. Mm, past 45. Swivel at the thigh. Double knee. Oh, no, it's, what is it? Oh, that's that band right there. What's it do on the left side? Double knee. Oh, no, still doesn't touch his ass. Hinge at the ankle goes back, goes forward, and then forward facing pin for rocker. For accessories, NTW comes with two splayed out hands, and then she comes with two fists. Those just pop out. You take that, you pop them back in right there. And then she comes with two energy effects that are reused, I believe. I would have liked to seen something a little more individual for her specifically, but... <sighs> I guess. For Deadpool, you get two fists. You get two splayed out kind of wacky hands for hijinks and such. You get two sword slash knife gripping hands. And then of course, two trigger finger hands. Deadpool's hands are a little bit harder to pull out, but not harder to push in for whatever reason. You'll also notice on the back of the fist and the splayed out hand, it's just black glove. But then on the trigger finger and sword wielding hands, those are actually silver. This is Deadpool two hands and this is Deadpool one hands, if you have a preference. It's not that big a deal, but given that that looks like that, this is definitely a Deadpool two Deadpool. So I may take some silver, touch that up. Deadpool also comes with two swords, nice little sculpts, and I do mean little. Well, I say little, they just feel small and flimsy, and is it the other one? It's a bit bowed from the package. But at the same time, you slip it into the hand and it doesn't seem too small. And that's especially true when you slip it into the sheaths on the back and that just looks good. He also comes with a knife. Not a lot of detail here, but it doesn't really need a lot of detail. I mean, look at the rest of the figure. It's a plain knife. That's okay. But that goes in the hand. Not a problem at all. Or that slips down here on the left leg. You get to here, it starts getting tight. So it's not just going to flop out. He also comes with a stuffed unicorn. <laughs> and I get what this is for. I remember it more from the first movie than the second. I think in the second, it was when he was on the couch after he, you know, lost his lower half. But it's a softer material. It bends around a bit. And then there's two pistols that aren't, well, I don't know. Are these realistic or not? They seem more laser gunish. And I think I've seen them with a couple of comic book Marvel Legends lately. The grip is kind of thick and you get it in there. You have to kind of turn it and get it and push and go around and get your finger in the guard. But once you do, it's not bad. But there's some Desert Eagles in the holsters. Unfortunately, those are glued in. On this side, I was successful in just pushing from the barrel and it just popped right out. So I have one Desert Eagle, but that's not working on the second one. I've heated it. I've jammed a small flathead screwdriver in there. It does not want to come loose, especially since it seems to be glued at the trigger guard. And you put that one in the grip, it goes down, you turn right into it. It looks so much more natural for this hand. I will keep working on that one and hope I get that out because him dual wielding these, oh, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. putting it back in the holster, it's not really a tight grip. It does try to fall out. Deadpool stands at about six and a quarter inches tall, which would be accurate to six three. And then Negasonic Teenage Warhead stands at about five and a half to the top of her head, not her hair, which is actually slightly tall, but still good. Because bringing in Cable, who unlike the comics was shorter than Deadpool in the movie, and then Domino, who was kind of in between, all four of them together, I, the scale works fantastic. I think the official heights are 5'3", 5'6", 5 5 5 and 6'2". And this works out. Shortest, tallest, and then somewhere in between. But slightly smalled with some of the MCU characters. I think Hemsworth is 6'3", and then Evans is 6'0". So it still works, but 
well, I don't know. Actually, Captain America and Thor are slightly big. So, anyway, this will still work. And if you mix your movie and comic book figures together, <laughs> this still works. Deadpool breaks walls, displays, he can go anywhere. Because hell, I'm actually a bit surprised about this. Let's do, switch them, go over here, because I think Snake Eyes is five something. That looks good. You can almost slip your Deadpool into the G.I. Joe display too. So at the end of the day, I may be biased, but oh, an excellent two pack, but not without its problems. It's unfortunate that Negasonic Teenage Warhead had some corners cut just because of all the new sculpting that went on here. Of course they wanted to pour all the new stuff into Deadpool, but honestly she did get more new parts than I thought she would. So hopefully they'll take the new parts here, add some more new parts to it, and maybe down the road we can get a Yukio 2-pack. But for Deadpool, I guarantee they use this again somewhere. Maybe another 2-pack, maybe with a couple of changes to it, extra accessories, a gray version, because they just nailed this thing. Of course I say that a lot about the MCU figures, where they all get dedicated sculpts and so much detail and nice likenesses and a lot of those don't get reused but this is deadpool he's made to show up in other places other lines other waves other two packs so i, I don't know i do want to do a little repainting just because i mean it's deadpool for me it's worth the extra work i need other characters from deadpool too obviously juggernaut and fire fist and x-force and Oh man, just anybody else they want to make. I will buy them. Hell, I got this from Dorkside and I'm already on the hunt for an extra one somewhere because I want different versions. I mean, like I said, I may be biased, but at the same time, they did a great job here. So if you enjoyed the review, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on the foosh. It was very difficult finding a pose for Deadpool where he would not be just so imposing over Negasonic Teenage Warhead. But oh, hopefully this is just the beginning, well, along with Domino and Cable, just the beginning of some Deadpool display.